popular in, in Google in general. Uh, people love watching videos. Uh, they either go directly to YouTube for that. And Google, like you said, surfaces it in the Discover feed quite often as well. If you, as a publisher, have a lot of video content, and I work with a lot of publishers whose primary channel is TV, and then they also have a website. So for them, video is natural. They're, they're mainly a video production company that also publishes news articles. And it's it's important to let Google know that you have embedded videos in your articles. Uh, the best way to do that is, of course, with video object structure data markup on your, your web pages where you embed those videos, as well as having a separate video sitemap, video XML sitemap, or video references in your standard XML sitemaps, so that Google knows why this content is video rich and we can surface it as, as a video article as such in, in Discover and in other news ecosystems. You see that reflected in top stories carousels, especially when there's an article shown there that has an embedded video and Google knows it has an embedded video. There's a little play icon as part of the little thumbnail image so that users know why this article contains a video. Um, it's interesting that the click-through behavior on that can be very different depending on the user itself. Uh, some users don't want to access an article if it has a video because they don't want to watch the video they just want to read an article whereas for other types of users they they're more encouraged to click on that because they're much more likely to engage with video content than they would be with, with written content and it depends very much on the type of audience that you're trying to target uh, if for more older uh, what i would call you know more politically focused audience the video content doesn't always lead to higher click-through rates as a younger audience is, is much more likely to click on video content and engage with that sort of, of article. So you have to be careful as a publisher to not try and develop in a way that doesn't align with your main readership. You have to really understand what your readers ask from you and, and want from you as a publisher before you start diving headfirst into all these different media formats like videos and also podcasts. Um, so, you know, it's, it's, it's very quick sometimes you say right we need to do video and we need to do audio and we need to do all these other multimedia formats but you have to stop and ask yourself the question is that what our audience wants from us is that the sort of content we need to produce as a website or should we stick with the classic uh, written format that has brought us to where we are does that align more with what our audience wants and those are always hard decisions because it's easy to just stick with what you know um, and say right that's that's the safe bet but maybe your audience is actually ready for video content and you start should start developing in that area. Uh, but it's also very easy to waste a lot of effort on developing those formats and your audience just isn't interested in it at all. So doing proper audience research is, is probably something that most news organizations are rather bad at because they, they've been doing things a certain way for a long time and they, they're sticking to their guns and they don't necessarily understand their audience as well as they think they do. They, 